sensitive sectors. We have not had to give up on any sensitive sector where Indian industry or Indian farmers or Indian agriculture could have faced any stress. And you'll be happy to know while India will get nearly 100% access to the Australian market duty free, of which nearly 98% plus of our value of trade today will get zero duty from day one, from today. And just a few items, I think 100 items or so, 100 lines, which is probably it's 10, 12, 15 items, where we will uh, get the zero duty in over the next five years. But there also the trade value is barely one and a half percent. And that will of course go up when they also start getting the duty. Whereas products like agricultural products, or daily areas which were very sensitive for India, but without which Australia has never done anything, have been kept out. So our dairy will be protected, our farmers will be protected, and I must thank the Australian government, both the previous government and the current government, for their huge support and the sensitivity which they displayed while finalizing the agreement. In fact, if I may share with you some happy coincidences or some happy experiences while negotiating. And uh, some of you have been a part of that story, you may remember it. But many of you I see in the room, particularly the Bombay business persons, don't know much about how this agreement went through. The Mumbai press also is not familiar. So I'll take a couple of minutes to share with you where this agreement took the turning point. You will all recall that Australia and India were doing trade negotiations for decades. And somewhere about 10, 12 years ago it was aborted. And India decided to get into the RCEP negotiation in 2012 or 13 under the previous government. And personally I think entering the RCEP agreement would have been the death knell of manufacturing and several other sectors in India. Because RCEP was nothing but a free trade agreement with China. And we would have actually thrown our whole Indian industry to very, very unfair competition from a non-transparent economy like China. And Indian industry was petrified. And I use that word with great responsibility. When I started engaging with stakeholders, with industry, captains, with associations, retailers, I went through the entire Indian industry segment across sectors. And nobody was happy with it, with RCEP. I wonder why and with what consultation the previous government had got into the RCEP negotiation in the first place. And I must thank Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji for having the ability and the decisive leadership to say no in front of world leaders to a joining RCEP. On 4th of November 2019, when he stood up in Bangkok in front of all the leaders of 15 other countries, all the ASEAN countries, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, China, all their top leadership was there. And Prime Minister Modi boldly stood up and said the RCEP does not meet the principles or the guiding uh, areas of agreement on which RCEP was first conceptualized and therefore India chooses not to join RCEP. I think it was a day where almost the entire country celebrated back home in India that India was not joining RCEP. We already have a free trade agreement with all the ASEAN countries, with, Australia, with uh, Japan and Korea. So 12 countries were covered. Today, Australia gets covered. That's 13. New Zealand, our total trade is about 300 or 350 million dollars. Very small country, very far away, very small interests both ways in terms of trade. Though they are very keen to do an FTA with India, but really we don't have the bandwidth right now in my ministry to be able to start one more negotiation. And the 15th was 
other than us was China. So effectively we would have landed up doing a free trade agreement with China. And therefore walking out of RCEP was one of the most prudent, economically wise decision that India could take. And the world appreciated and recognized this decision as being in the best Indi interests of India and Indian business and the people of India. Soon thereafter, the Australians started talking to us as we had all expected. In fact, New Zealand also talked to us, but we've not been able to give time to that relationship. As yet, we look at it at a later date. And I was just looking up my calendar. It was on 30th September 2021. 30th September that Dan Tehan, the then Commerce Minister, International Trade Minister, came to New Delhi and we had slated delegation level talks post lunch and then the launch of the FTA was to be announced. I don't know what happened but we just thought let's have a cup of coffee before we get into the delegation level meeting. Tapan was there, Tarpan was there. And we retreated into a small room which was probably just about the size of the stage. Just a small room like this. We got into a room and started talking. And friends, that conversation went on for some four hours. We talked to each other one on one for four hours. And in that four hours, we almost finalized the free trade agreement. The understanding, the deep understanding that was created in those four hours, the agreement that we both came to that every issue which is sensitive to India, Australia will recognize that and not labor it. And whatever is sensitive for Australia, we will appreciate that and we will not push for it. We literally that day decided and for the first time ever Australia has done a free trade agreement without deal and most agricultural products. At that time we decided, I said it's going to be impossible for me to open up dairy. Millions and millions of our farmers and small uh, income people, families are dependent on it. It's their supplementary income and they cannot compete with small dairy farms with some of them even as small as four or five livestock or 10, 12 livestock, some with two livestock, will not be able to compete with your large farms. And I must appreciate and place on record that the Australian government was very, very sensitive, very considerate and gave us full cooperation throughout the negotiation. Those four hours set the ground rules. In that, we discussed this income tax, double taxation also for IT. I spent a lot of time in explaining to him how that is not fair and hurting India. We even called in, I think, Rajesh Bhut, the JS from uh, Revenue, briefly to the meeting. We had our lunch also sitting there, while all the senior officials were pacing outside, very far in, what is cooking inside. But what was cooking was what we are entering into force. And friends, I'm sharing this with you because soon after that, if you recall, there was another wave of uh, COVID in Australia, then a wave of COVID in India, because of which through October, November, December, we could not do any meetings. There was no travel between Australia and India. No meetings were held except I think one or two VCs which I saw uh, on my phone with Dante and some official level small talk, nothing of significance. On 31st December, around the same time, 2.21 when Tom sends me the message today, uh, or maybe a little earlier than that since the new year comes in first in Australia, they were celebrating 1st January. 2022 and on television I saw Sydney Harbour all lit up and lakhs of people out there celebrating the new year. So I called up Dan and I told him guys it seems to be, COVID seems to be over. You are celebrating and back in action. 
So let's get tracking on our agreement. And while we shook him for the new year, we decided let's do a VC on 4th of January. 4th of January, we did our first VC to start negotiating. Am I right? You we all are part of that VC. To start negotiating this free trade agreement. And friends, the last VC we did, in between our teams went there, their teams came here. But the last VC was on 25th March. So 4th January was the first VC where we decided to relaunch. 25th March was the last VC when we ticked off all the boxes, finalized the commas and full stops. The last item we opened up for them was cochlear implants. I still recall that. We got the last few items they were not opening up so that this could become 100% market access for Indian business on 25th March and 2nd April as we celebrated Gudi Parma in the August presence of both the Prime Ministers, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Scott Morrison. We, Dan Tehan and I, signed the agreement in New Delhi. So it was a real labor of love <laughs> working through this agreement. So while technically this started on 30th September, ended on 2nd April, the actual practical work started on 4th January, ended on 2nd April. And I was just calculating the number of days from 4th January to 2nd April. Friends, it comes to 88 days. The same time that we had taken for the UAE. That also was finalized at 88 days exactly. You must have heard me mention that. It's a coincidence that I've just discovered. So you can see 27 days of January, 28 of February, 31 of March, and two days of April. I've just done the maths and it came to 88 days. I'm just sharing these small nuggets because all of you are part of this journey. I remember in this very hotel, in the room across on the other side, I did the last stakeholder consultation. You recall that number? Where we did with engineering goods. Uh, Mahesh Desai was there. I don't know if he's not here today. You were there that day? So we did our engineering. Yeah, you were from the steel industry. Right, so steel was there. Engineering was there. I remember the longest meeting was with wine. Uh, Rajiv Savan from Sula and many other wine industry people were there. It was a remarkable church. I think you also came. Gems and jewelry also had come. Textiles had come. So we had some wonderful engagements with all of you being a part of this journey. Thank you very much for all your cooperation, your support, for your willingness to open Indian markets also, your confidence that you can stand up to any competition and your commitment to make India a great nation. Truly appreciate each one of you. I pray for your success. I pray each one of you benefits hugely from this agreement. This is a beginning, the second beginning after UAE. We have many more to go in the pipeline. And I'm sure with your support, your continued, let's say, push to help us get other agreements on the table, I'm sure 2023 will be another great year, another successful year of India's engagement with the rest of the world. India today works from a position of strength. We negotiate with confidence and we negotiate for a brighter future for our young boys and girls. We negotiate for opportunities, for jobs, for work, for startups, for technology, for research, for innovation, for education, for health. And with the support of this team sitting in front of me, I think an agreement, which if I can take an analogy from cricket, which also binds Australia and India together. 
This can be called an agreement that was negotiated with the speed of Bretley and the perfection of such a agreement. So, Happy New Year to all of you. Great business both in India and internationally for all of you in your respective areas. I am confident we have great times ahead of us as a nation under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi. I am confident that going forward India will become a developed nation. India will take prosperity to every single citizen every person who lives in India and I am sure each one of you will be a part of that journey and you will contribute hugely to this success story in the making. God bless all of you and your businesses and your families.